everybody, Annie here. So uh, I have a fun little story to tell this week. I apologize for this video being a little late. I did make the video earlier this week, but messed up some of the settings on slobs and ended up with kind of a mess. So um, we missed a couple of quests that I did without you guys. I apologize, but we will have some fun today. So one thing that I decided that I kind of wanted to do while we were kind of going through all of these side quests and stuff, because side quests, you know, they're only so much fun, right? Um, is talk about some of the lore and the areas in Eorzea that maybe don't get a lot of attention, right? So some of these really cool places. So doing some research on the areas that we're in, trying to find some fun stuff to show you guys. So. The first thing I want to start out with showing you guys, and I'm glad that it's nighttime in game right now because it's so beautiful at night. Boop, boop, boop. We are going to go to the Salt Strand, which is over here near the Morobi Dry Docks. Um, and this is an area where Dalamund the Moon that caused the calamity, so essentially the re breaking down of. Um, original 1.0 into a realm reborn a piece of it fell here uh, so you can see this big huge crater that it made and then the heat and the salt water kind of solidified into these crystals and it is it is beautiful like look at this guys it's just sitting over here just chilling just a place kind of off the map Oh, it's so it's so cool. So basically piece of the moon came down right here. Oh. And that was during the calamity. Right now we do have some beast tribes that have some camps over here. Um, but we're pretty pretty close to the dry docks as you can see. So since we don't have any quests at the dry docks anymore, considering the fact that I accidentally did a couple of them on that other video this week. We're gonna go a little bit north and we're gonna head towards God's Grip. So this area was also hugely impacted by the calamity. So right here used to be, so as you can see, there's kind of like the God's Grip here and where the Morobi dry docks is, this used to be a peninsula so like this whole part right here was full land um, during the calamity a lot of the land bridge ended up underwater so it became kind of an island of its own but we came over here and we built the bridge so that we could get back across to the bay because of ingenuity so now we have like this little bridge crossing that we can go to. You can see really cool little view of the bay. I love this game at night. Like I think it's really pretty at night. Anyway, all right. So that's all still kind of under construction. Um, one of the quests that I did earlier this week was like to kind of help with that. But of course, you trust me, you don't want to see that video. All right, so we're going to go up here into the cedar woods where we have some quests here. And there are def a couple other places that we can kind of take a look at while we're here. So, let's see. Let's see what quests we have. Whack-a-mole or Mogram had a little lamb. Okay. I'm guessing a little bit about what these quests are going to be about. Red Rooster Stead. This is a little homestead here. Got the chair mount yeah all right so we are gonna come over here and talk to dubro arin lona arin lona has some moles she would like removed go figure right if a lifetime of meticulous research into the advancements of the agricultural arts has taught me anything it is that the fruits of knowledge are incapable of preserving themselves without an adventurer brawn to protect them i fear all my work will come to naught Take, for example, the splendid ogre pumpkin crop I was able to cultivate years of hypothesizing and testing at last made tangible only to be snatched away by those subterranean sorners, the clever hedge moles. 
I've already engineered the pumpkins to resist fire, drought, frost, weeds, insects, and festive rituals. I just need someone to kill the moles. First of all, how do you engineer them to resist festive rituals? Is it like they are they can't be carved or something? I'm confused by this. All right, hold on. We'll do one at a time. So we're going to go do this one and maybe take a look at some other places up here. Can we see where it is on the map? Where's the next place I'm looking for? Where is this? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Hold on. So for those who don't know a little bit about the story of Adoshia, um, of course, Limza is here in Vildebrand, and that's kind of the name of the continent where the Ranoshia, Ran that's what it says, by the way. Um, I looked at the Romanji and it's pronounced Ranoshia, which is weird. Um, I know I'm butchering the Japanese, but you know, what are you gonna do? So the pirates built Limza, and now we have the Admiral Whirlwind, which who, who comes in some pretty great stories later in the game, but no spoilers, of course. Um, and these are just kind of the different areas that are left after the calamity. A lot of a lot of it's kind of tore up, some islands, things like that. A lot of it is owned by Limza, but at the same time, there's a ton of land here that is owned by the kobolds, right? So some argument about who is the rightful owner of a lot of the land around here. I was looking for for the Madman Bridge. It looks like we went a little bit past it. That's probably why I didn't see it. Ah, here it is. Okay, so we're gonna go over here real quick to show the Madman Bridge, which is super interesting. Again, just some really neat stuff that you can learn about these areas that maybe you just never thought twice about. So the Madman Bridge basically at a certain point, once you cross the bridge, um, the kobolds have control of a lot of the land. And they essentially say, you must be a madman to cross the bridge without being prepared, is essentially where, where, what they call it. Now, the, this rock formation right here, where you can see it's got like two arches, this is called the eyes. And it's actually designed as sort of like an outlook for the yellow jackets. It's like a post where they can kind of keep an eye on things. But because of the two arches here, they call it the eyes. Which I also thought was pretty neat. So let's go see where our moles are. Okay, so up here in North Cedarwood, my chocobo, so chunkin. All right, pumpkins. So visit the pumpkin patch and slay the clever hedge moles. Sensing a hostile. Oh, I pushed the wrong button already. I'm so terrible at playing archer. Man, I do want to get to bar just for the like music related stuff. I think that's one of the neatest things about this game. Um, I did play Lotro and in Lotro, um, I played a minstrel. So I really liked the idea that I could play another game where my character can have like some kind of ability to actually create music. I think that's amazing and I cannot wait to be able to do it, but I also have a very hard time playing the bard as a whole. Like I did have a character one of the original times that I started playing ARR that was a bard so i did level one all the way up but i had such a hard time playing it in group context i had no idea what i was doing and it's like buffs and debuffs and buttons and all kinds of craziness all right hello Aaron lona well that was so easy it makes me wonder why i spent my life formulating complex solutions to problems rather than merely going around killing things Nevertheless, I'm afraid it's too late to alter my methods now. I'll continue to focus on the complex solutions and have you stick around to kill things. 
What hubris, what arrogance to believe that I, one woman alone, could overcome the unfathomably vast and profound mysteries of nature. But with you here, I'm sure we can do it. Oh, she got another quest. A bit of a tight spot. Care to partake in the inexorable march of science? The concoction I'm currently formulating could change horticulture as we know it. Imagine a fluid one could strew over crops to ward off pests. Oh, I don't need to imagine that. All I need is some ladybugs and someone to squash them. Ladybugs simply cannot resist aphids. Find some aphid lavender, dab it with a bit of aphid nectar, and they'll come swarm to the slaughter. I don't know how I feel about this. I mean, I guess it's fine, but we're like getting into some weird territory here. Aphic Lavender. It's just like a dude. I wonder if he's like, what is this person doing? Why are you pouring weird stuff on my, my props? What is happening? Oh, there are more. Hello, little ladybug. I apologize for the intrusion. But must be done for our side quest adventuring. All right. Oh, there's somebody with their carbuncle. He's so cute. We are going back over here. And let's talk a little bit to our Lona. Return to me once you've collected three vials of ladybug, vi ladybug viscera. It is elementary, really. Aphids live in fear of ladybugs, and so applying the scent of ladybug blood to our crops is certain to ward off parasites. We are manipulating the laws of nature. Of course, we could have just left the ladybugs go on defending their crops as always and not squash them for their viscera, but I hardly see the science in that. Yikes. Okay. That was, uh, that's something else, guys. Really don't know how I feel about this right now. All right, well, let's see if we can find any other cool stuff here in Take an adventure over to the Gray Fleet. So that you guys can see this as well. So in this area, basically we've got some big old cliffs. And they kind of built this area pretty much as like a wind harnessing. Oh, can't go any farther a wind harnessing thing, like windmill, windmill. Okay, no, let's not do that. Um, so <laughs> basically they harness the wind and grind grain, and make, you know, wheat and all that fun stuff. So pretty cool, pretty cool. Interesting that something called the gray fleet isn't actually ships. You know, that's kind of weird considering they're pirates, but you know, who am I to judge? All right, let's see where our next quest is treating you. So I hope everybody's as stoked for Endwalker as I am. I know we're all just kind of waiting impatiently. Oops, I should probably not be in the fire. Um, let's see what Mogram has to say. Has been losing sleep over his sheep. They call me a stead shepherd, but all three kinds of livestock we breed here fall under my crook. Nevertheless, sheep remain my first love, my one true passion. So you can imagine my dismay finding my flock in frumpy fleece. I can't very well take worn out wool to a market. A, sleep with, a sheep with no shine is good for nothing but big mutton. But where there's wool, there's a way. So see what that charlatan has to say. Huh, okay. We 
we are going to talk to, oh, Charlton. I thought he said Charlton, but he says Charlton. Now I feel really bad. Oh my goodness. Mogren had some little lambs whose fleece was white as snow, but everywhere the little lambs went, lice were sure to go. Now we're stuck with lousy sheep. In the time it takes me to brush one clean, the lice spread to two more. I just can't keep them up with them all by myself. If you could brush three shaggy sheep for me, three shaggy sheep, say that three times fast, we might be able to wipe out the infestation altogether. Let Morgrim know his sheep are in ship shape once you've finished. Alright, so anyway, back to Endwalker. I, as I have said before, am probably going to do a lot of the quests as a Dark Knight, but I'm also considering working on a Machinist, which is something I've never done before. Historically, I've been really, really bad at classes that are like machine related. I don't, I don't know why, but sometimes it's like I'm not good at things you have to put down on the ground or stuff like that. Uh, but I'm thinking about giving it a try because it actually looks like a lot of fun and I did kind of enjoy the dancer and it's sort of a similar, you know, the same type of DPS. So what do you guys think? Have you ever done any work on a machinist? Do you have friends that are machinists? How does, how does it feel? Does it play smooth? I mean, of course, things will be changing in Endwalker, but I'm just curious to know how other people feel about it. All right, on our way back to the Red Rooster Stead. For an adventurer, you certainly know how to wield a lice comb. As I'm sure you've found, sheep are delicate souls that require delicate care. Truly wonderful wool requires time, love, and tenderness. Time, love, and tenderness. You must caress their coats ever so gently. Listen to their soft bleating in your ear. Feel the warmth of their breath on your neck. This is getting a little creepy, dude. That's uh, a little bit weird, bro. Now he doesn't know what to do about his dodos. Much ado about dodos. They may call it the red rooster stead, but make no mistake, dodos are the birds that they keep this that keep this stead steady. Those sweet and tender eggs, those succulent meat, so long as you remove a dodal dodoling's poisonous glands, you're in for some scrumptious and healthy poultry, poultry. They're so delicious, I have to remind myself some birds just aren't meant to be caged. Or perhaps I don't. Talk to Spion and see if we can return those exquisite creatures to their pen. Alright, so we're gonna go try to return the exquisite creatures to their pen. Oh, I guess we gotta talk to Dubro about it first. Here we go. They're so cute. Look at how cute. Oh. I am ever pleased to see you. I was about to craft fowl. Mm -hmm. But with your help, we can round them up. Those dim-witted dodos pecked through the fencing and flew the coop, or um, fled the coop. Luckily, they know better than to leave the stead. There are three bolting dodos in all. If you spot one, just throw one of these dodo-sized sticks over its head. Once you've caught all the birds, would you mind leaving them in Margram's care? I need to repair the fencing before we can turn them to this enclosure, you see. All right, so we gotta find the bolting dodos. And I think I've done this one before, and I think it took me a minute to find one of them. Hopefully I'm not as bad as I used to be at this game. Oh, here's one. Hello, Mr. Dodo. Um, I guess, oh, sack! It, I thought it said stick. I was like, that's a weird, like, thing to do, but okay, I'm putting the dodo in the sack. This thing is bigger than me. How am I going to carry three sacks of dodo that are bigger than me? And they're probably not super happy about being in the sack to begin with. So I'm not sure this plan was very well thought out, but, you know, got a big head and little arms. Okay. Dota size sack. Let me specifically dodo size sacks instead of like just, you know, regular sacks. Where's the last one? Over here. Let's see if I can find it. 
Here is a lot easier, I suppose, when you can fly. Yeah, it is. Okay, Mr. Dodo, please would you get in the sack? This would be greatly appreciated. Okay, taking our dodo friends. I have heard everything. Hand me the dodos. Yeah, that's how it works. Oh, my precious darling. Without their poison breath, they're defenseless out in the wild. Daddy Dodo gets so worried. And now my daddy dodos have a mommy. Whoa! Bro, that is, uh, I feel like that escalated really quickly. Uh, yeah, um, stay around and look after my babies, won't you? At least until they're ripe for the slaughter. I don't know how I feel about that, dude. Uh, I think I'm just gonna, gonna make my way, I don't know, anywhere else. Ooh, I wonder what's going on over here. Alright, so that is a couple of side quests for today. I don't want to get anybody too bored um, doing this content, but what we are going to do is our normal look at my poor little house, which guys still needs some help. So please, please, please leave some comments, some ideas, let me know how you're feeling, what kinds of things you've seen that you've really liked in some of the housing, because Dude, I have no idea. I am so lost. Uh, I still have the same things in the front. I did add a couple of things to the inside, but again, this is just me kind of like shoving things in here. Like, oh, here's some tankers or something. Like, there's no <laughs> rhyme or reason to any of this. So I thought about the possibility of, and I, I kind of already started to set this up a little bit, and I didn't show you guys last time, so I wanted to make sure that I showed you guys. Um, but like back here, almost making like a fake garden. Like see, like here's the end of the house and then you can come back here and have like a whole like secret section that I was gonna make like super like dark and gloomy decorated, like a secret garden. And then, you know, the front and inside, whatever, but what do you guys think? Like, what kind of things do you think would be neat in like a dark and gloomy garden area? Because I definitely kind of like the idea of that. I don't know if it's just a little girl in me is like, yeah, the secret garden. <laughs> but I think it would be cool to have like a dark and spooky space back there. Um, at any rate, I'm gonna let you guys go. I will definitely see you again ne next week. Please don't forget to like and subscribe.